guys, it's Alex. Today I wanted to talk about crank a pallets. What's a crank a pallet? If you call a lot of these places uh, like a wrecking yard or a place that takes in, you know, total cars and they gut them, harness and all, and put it on a pallet so that, in theory, the swap becomes easier is very desirable and enticing. You go out there and you're like, I got everything. I got the dash. I got the shifter, I got the engine, the trans, the computer, everything. I'm just going to put it in my swap vehicle and I am done. Okay, so what happens? Let's say, especially with automatic cars, let's say you get a 2015 Mustang crank a pallet, automatic. And you're going to put it in a Fox body, which is very popular. So you have this massive wiring harness that has the body control module, electronic steering, ABS, four ABS, you know, all, all four corners. Um, it has all the dash stuff, the body control module, the AC line, the, the door stuff, the wind, everything, every single little thing. You're not going to use about half of those things, maybe more like 75% of those things. Are you going to put in a 2015 Mustang Dash cluster, shifter, and center console on a Fox body? Probably not. So all that stuff goes away. What you're more than likely going to do is keep the stock Dash or buy a Dakota Digital Dash, put in a shifter like from an AOD Mustang, leave the Dash stock, and all those wires that interface with the shifter, the brake switch, the pedal, everything that interfaces with the stuff on the dash and the center console are now useless, right? They're just gonna sit there and do a whole bunch of nothing. So, what will happen to the car? Well, nine times out of 10, what's gonna happen is if you hook everything up, except the stuff you don't need, meaning ABS, body control module stuff, which is very important, center console stuff, you know, uh, dash stuff, steering wheel stuff, paddle shit, all this stuff that you're not gonna use, now is gonna render the vehicle, I don't wanna say useless, but what you're probably gonna experience is the car will start, and when you go to put it in drive, nothing happens. Nothing happens. You're like, wait, uh, the car starts, I put it in drive, and nothing happens the car doesn't move forward it doesn't do anything and you're a little confused as to why that's happening well what you just did essentially is this grab a 2015 mustang which i am in right now disconnect everything disconnect the body control module disconnect the switch that tells the car that the shifter is in the d position because sometimes the shifter well in a stock Mustang, 2015 and up, if you don't put your foot on the brake, the car will not even allow you to go into gear. The, disconnect everything that goes to the dash on this car. Do you think this car will even start? Well, essentially, a crank a pallet with the wiring is what you're doing as if you were to disconnect everything but the motor and trans on a stock 15 and up Mustang if that's the thing you're going to get because the wiring harness that is left over that you don't need all that jumbled crap all that stuff is gone see ya we don't need it because it's in a fox body you're not going to wire abs in a fox body you're not going to wire airbag stuff in a fox body you're not going to wire uh the seats to make sure that someone is actually sitting in a fox body so the airbag even goes off or doesn't depending on if someone is actually sitting in the passenger seat or not so the crank a pallet situation becomes a tricky one. Is it right for you? Now, I don't want to become a target for people that sell crank a pallet kits. I think it's very good if you're going to do everything. I'm saying this massive harness that comes right from the car, if you're going to connect every single little input that comes in that body harness, engine harness, trans harness, everything, I think it's a good idea. Don't be surprised that when you go ahead and put it in drive and you have this mass wiring just kind of tucked up under the dash that you don't need, that is all body control related, that the vehicle will not even go forward. You're gonna get a bunch of codes, circuit codes, because nine times out of 10, 
you don't have any of those things connected. And when there's an incomplete circuit, you get circuit codes. And certain codes will not even allow the car to drive. So what do you do? You bought this crank and pallet situation because you didn't do your research. And you went, what do I do? What do I do? Well, now you have to buy a control pack. Yep, you gotta either hit up Power by the Hour or someone that sells a Ford Racing control pack. If it's a Gen 1 Auto control pack, your only bet is literally Power by the Hour. Gen 1 Auto control pack. If it's a Gen 1 Manual control pack, Ford Racing sells them. If it's a Gen 2 Auto or Manual, Ford Racing sells them. So you're gonna have to decide if a crank a pallet is right for you. Should I buy the whole thing? Or should I just buy the engine and trans and buy the control pack separate? That's what I think you should do, in my opinion. I think you should buy engine, trans, and then, you know, accessories, everything you can get, and then have a control pack that only concentrates on making sure the motor and the trans, the motor and the transmission and the ECU interface together very well so that you don't need any unneeded wiring that causes circuit codes and negates you from even getting it into gear. Do you know how many times I have heard people say, I have a 17 Mustang swapped in a 65, um, I have a, basically the, the order comes in and it says 17 auto stock cold air, uh, you know, P-mass cold air intake. I'm sorry, uh, 17 auto P-mass cold air intake. Okay, I send a tune and I'm like, what happened? Oh, uh, the car doesn't start. What do you mean the car doesn't start? It should just start right up. Oh, your tune's not making the car start. Okay, so tell me more about the car. Well, it's a 65 Mustang or a Mark V Roadster from uh, Factory 5. Oh, so it's not a 17 Mustang. It's a swap vehicle that you took everything from a donor vehicle, thought you could just place it in a car and that you would order it for that vehicle and the car would start. Not only do you need pats, <clears throat> pats deleted potentially, you're gonna need a whole bunch of other things to make that thing work. That's why I urge people to do their research before they buy anything. A lot of people do this knee jerk kind of like impulse buy. Oh, oh my God, a crank a pallet, bah, bah, they, they get it. They get it home and they're fucking excited and they're very good at uh, putting things together and they go ahead and install in the vehicle without, I mean, do all the work. And then when they run into trouble, they go into the forums and then they start asking the questions. You should start asking the questions before you even buy anything. Because the best, quickest, and easiest way to get your project car going is buying a motor fully dressed, buy a transmission, all, everything you need, and get a control pack. You get a control pack that is a very dumbed down wiring harness that only controls what you need. Please don't make that mistake of buying something twice. Do you know how many times I have seen people buy a crank a pallet situation and go, God damn it, now I have to buy a control pack. How come they didn't tell me this? It's not their job to tell you that. It's their job to tell you, you know, sell your product. Look, you got a crank a pallet, here you go. It cranks on a pallet. It, it starts on the pallet just fine. Vroom, look at that, vroom, vroom. cool. So if you want to show your friends a five liter in a, on a pallet run by a crank a pallet. If you want that to run in a Mustang or any other swap vehicle, you might have to do a lot of wiring or just buy a control pack. The other thing is buying control packs that are not even vetted. A lot of guys, and I don't know why they do this, they go by the price. Well, this wiring harness is only 800 bucks. I'm not gonna name names because I don't wanna get companies in trouble, but the only control packs I recommend are Ford Racing and Power by the Hour. That's it. Anyone else that makes a, a wiring harness, a control pack or anything like that, I personally don't recommend. You could take my word for it or not. Who the hell am I, right? So people say, I bought this harness from this guy and the, the car gets power, but it doesn't turn on and the injectors don't pulse. I tried to hit him up and he like fell off the face of the earth. Really? How much was the harness? 900 bucks. Can I send you the harness and you fix it? <laughs> no, because what that person did is they took a stock harness and they just went, eh, snip, 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 here, 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 this is all you need, da, 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 da. 
nine hundred dollars and you and you go oh this will work and then you put it in your car and nothing works and then you do everything possible to make that harness work but at the end of the day you're probably going to end up having to buy a complete different harness and try to get your money back from the person you bought the initial harness for but they fall off the face of the earth they close their accounts they close their facebook and you are now shit out of luck and you bought a control pack twice do your research way 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 before you have to you have to make any purchase it's your, your hard-earned money blood sweat and tears and you know you got a project car you want to get rolling for the summer it's coming up and you don't want to buy something twice you can call people like power by the hour you can actually get them on the phone and yeah it's not not a power by the hour commercial but there are people in that shop that know everything about swap stuff and before you buy a crank a pallet situation hit them up see what needs to happen before you buy anything and whether you buy from them or not it's up to you but in terms of knowing what needs to happen before you buy something to swap a coyote a voodoo anything into a older mustang roadster uh cobra uh mark 5 factory 5 vehicle get informed first don't look for the cheap option look for the best option because the best option usually is the easiest option and most tuners on the planet can tune a control pack a lot easier than troubleshooting this pats off that wiring this do yourself a favor do a lot of research before you just buy a crank and pallet situation and you end up with a whole bunch of wires you can't do anything with thanks for listening guys talk to you later